Welcome to the latest in my series of lockdown videos. Today, I've taken you to the grounds of Schoon Palace, grounds which are scheduled to reopen to the public on the 1st of July, so we're looking forward to that. I am standing on what is known as Boot Hill or Moot Hill, the ancient anointing place or crowning place of Scottish kings. So today, uh, this land is owned by the Murray family. The, the palace, the grounds have been in their family for 400 years. But Perth or Schoon as an important settlement is much older than that. We have evidence of ancient burial barrows, uh, parallel ditches dating back five and a half thousand years. The Romans established a fort just down the, or up the river at Bertha, 1900 years ago, and this was also a power base of the, the Picts, one of the big Scottish tribes who eventually merged with the Scots to form the Kingdom of Scotland that we know today. In the 7th century, this became a very early Christian centre in Scotland, and the monastery that eventually evolved was to become one of the richest in the land. By the 9th century, it was becoming a real power base, a centre of royal power, in effect our parliament. For in some early records, Scotland is actually referred to as the Kingdom of Scone. So Moot Hill, or Boot Hill, on which we are standing, this is where kings would come originally to be what we call anointed or acclaimed, but in the early 900s, we have the first record of a formal non-secular crowning, i.e. the first time that a king has been crowned in Scotland by the church. So incredibly important moment in the evolution of Christianity and the power of the church in Scotland when King Constantine II was crowned. Now, Schoon was one of the, the royal family's most important places. Um, the, in those days we had what's known as an itinerant monarchy. Basically they moved around the country, they would stay at different places. If you were a lord you would be expected to feed and water the king and his entourage and once you had run out of food and wine they would move on somewhere else. But Perth and Schoon were definitely one of the favourite places. The Scottish Parliament met here for hundreds of years and every time a new act was passed, a bell would ring. This is not the original bell, but the sounding of the bell would indicate a new law had been passed and indeed the law of Scotland, the law of the land, was sometimes known as the law of Schoon. I'm standing in front of the burial aisle to the, the Mori family, including the first Lord Stormont. And this is just one of many pieces of history here on the Schoon estate. This estate has such strong royal connections. For those of you who are Shakespeare fans, Macbeth would have ruled from here. King Malcolm would have ruled from here. In 1292, this is where John Balliol was crowned. Crowned, having been chosen by the English King Edward I as our, the person with the best claim to the throne. After four years, he rebelled and that triggered the Scottish Wars of Independence. King Robert the Bruce was crowned here, twice. Once by the, the monks and once a few days later by uh, the Countess of Buchan, the sister of the Earl of Fife, who is the hereditary person responsible for crowning Scottish kings. However, he was a traitor and down in England. Other kings that are connected here, King James I. I told you about him in an early, earlier video. He was the man who was murdered in Perth and we lost the role as capital to somewhere else. 
King James II also crowned here, King Charles II. This was visited by Bonnie Prince Charlie, eh, who passed through Schoon on his march south. His father had actually been here 30 years earlier, where he based himself here during the 1715 Jacobite Rebellion. Now, as a result of that visit, the, the Mores had been imprisoned for supporting the old pretender. They learned their lesson when Bonnie Prince Charlie came through. The males of the house kept a low profile and it was their daughters that entertained the prince. So how did the Murrays come to be the estate holders here? Well, they have been the land, the landowners for the past 400 years and their ownership dates back to the time of the Gowrie House conspiracy, which I told you about in an earlier video. This was the plot to kidnap, kill King James VI. After that plot had been interrupted, David Murray, the King's cupbearer, was one of the people who persuaded the people of Perth not to rise up in anger at what had happened. He was to go on to become well, the provost of Perth, but he was also seen as the person responsible for the story of what had actually happened. This fairly dodgy tale of this conspiracy against the king. Nevertheless, he was rewarded by being given the Ruthven lands here and being promoted to Viscount Lord Stormont. Uh, now, the Murrays already had a lot of land in this area. Schoon was seen as a real windfall. And in my next video, I will talk more about the development of Schoon Palace, the building we see behind me. Thank you.